Hello, hello everybody. Hi to everybody in the chat. Welcome. I'm Natalie and this is Scientology Life After a Cult where I talk about the latest in Scientology news that has the internet buzzing and also share about my 35 years in Scientology, growing up in Scientology, being in the C organization and leaving with three generations of my family. We made like a banana and we split. <laughs> All right. If this is your first time here, I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button. If you like this video as we go along, hit the like button. Or if you're brave enough to hit that like button before I even get into it, would appreciate that too, because it will help with notifications. Or so I'm told. So I think it's worth trying. Hello to everybody there in the chat. I love seeing all of you. Thank you so much to my moderators today. I think we have Dip Me in Glitter here, Nancy's here, and my Tony is here. Tony and I are going to do a follow-up to our last video that we did together. We got a lot of questions back from, from different people who caught that, and we really appreciate it. And we want to answer that questions, those questions. So we're probably going to do that, I think, around noon central time. So noon, my time. So we'll be back in a couple hours after this. I'll get out a notification, but if you're going to be around, make note because I think it's going to be real, really fun and bring some, some balance to this. There's so many crazy things happening in Scientology with the protests and so many things that I also want to be able to share that part of life after a cult. And that's what Tony and I are going to talk about this afternoon, 12 p.m. Central Time. So make sure you check that out. Thank you again to the moderators. You guys are so amazing. Just so on top of it. Today, we are going to talk about more protesters who've been attacked and the LAPD does nothing. Our favorite Scientology spy, Diane from Ventura, shared more leaked emails. We had her on the channel the other night. For the second time, she is still getting phone calls and emails from Scientology, even after what we did. So that's going to be a lot of fun to share. Uh, let's see, what else? We're going to talk about Aaron Smith Levin. He gave his response to Mike Rinder's recent blog articles. More specifically, I want to dial in on a point that he makes. We're going to talk about that. And links down below to everything that I'm going to talk about, which is going to include some Pearl Snappy because, you know, it's really hard for me to do a live stream without having her in the mix because she has another new original song for protesting Scientology in Austin. So we're going to check that out as well. So lots to come. Hold on to your seats because here we go. Ah, let's see. Let's see. You know what? Let's start with these leaked emails. Let's start with that. I'm going to read them to you because I'm going to be honest, I haven't figured out how to pull up just a photo yet. I think it has something to do with Google Slides and I need to do that. So for now, I'm just going to go ahead and read it. And to remind anyone who might not know, Diane from Ventura is my favorite Scientology spy who is pretty much open about her Scientology spying. Everybody knows who she is, that she's doing it, except Scientology doesn't seem to know because they continue to call her and send her emails after she's been on this channel two times talking about it and sharing about it. And Diane, who some referral to as, as I think Mama Squirrel, because it was Diane who leaked the email to alert the protesters of the dirty tricks that Scientology was going to be doing, which really turned out to be nothing but a few of their members videotaping people who already live stream their lives on the internet. It was a total fail. So let's do that. If you have any questions as we go along, put question in front of it. I've got Nancy helping out to star some things. The super chats get starred automatically, but if you write question, then it helps, helps us find it more easily. So let's talk about these leaked emails. Now, again, Diane, our favorite Scientology spy, was just on the channel the other night. I think it was it was two nights ago. The very next day, at 10.05 in the morning, she gets an email. The person who emails Diane tends to be Betsy, who is from the Church of Scientology, Los Angeles. She uses a couple different email addresses, and she uses a couple of different titles. But the gist of her job is she seems to be the person over the Scientology front groups for Los Angeles, for that organization. So check out this email that she sent to Diane from Ventura, our favorite Scientology spy, 
after she was on the channel again. So this is to Diane from Betsy. Hi. Well, the harassment from the TikTokers has been very bad. What we did was put up curtains and the individuals coming there to study courses pull in the back to the parking lot there. So she's talking about the Hollywood Testing Center, which has been closed from as far as you can tell from looking in the front. So Betsy says that the the people going on course just go in from the back. I didn't even realize that they delivered courses there. I I thought they were delivered at the loss at the at the blue buildings. So yeah, unless she's talking about the blue buildings as well. Could be, but I think she's talking no, she's talking about the testing center. So they put up curtains and the people who are coming there to study just pull in the back parking lot. And she continues to say, it's actually been open and in operation every single day. But by blocking all view to the inside, we prevented the TikTokers from having any content at all. We all know that that is not true. Okay. <laughs> TikTokers, live streamers, protesters have had plenty of material and plenty to share online. We know this because I'm here every day sharing highlights from it. But Betsy thinks Betsy thinks this, so we will give that to her. So again, she says, we prevented the TikTokers from having any content at all, and their ratings started plummeting. <laughs> we also know that's not true. Pretty much anybody covering Scientology right now, their channel's actually growing. Winning. We're winning. What else does she say? <clears throat> No more money for them. Again, not true. Also, we've been steadily prosecuting them and have gotten a few arrested and several banned from TikTok or their accounts have been closed. We're down to the very last ones to get rid of. Ooh, Bessie, that sneaky girl. Scientology so sneaky going around, shutting down TikTok accounts, getting people arrested. It is interesting to hear, because again, if you've been following my channel, or any of the other channels covering this, you know that this is actually, this is not true, but this shows you insight into the mindset of Scientology and what they're telling their members and their staff members, because they need to know that they're winning. <laughs> so she continues. So that's what's happening over there. We're all doing good. And so are the folks coming to take their courses. Come down for the reopening when we are finished renovating. It will be great. If we get any more squirrels, we have new tools in place to quickly take care of the problem. It will not be as bad as before because there is no money in it for them now. Much love, Betsy. <laughs> oh, <clears throat> So funny, so funny, so funny. I love gaining that understanding into what's going on behind the scenes there and what they're telling people. So pretty much she's saying, look, the testing center is not shut down. There's people still doing courses. They just go around the back. And we put up curtains, curtains, and we're getting their accounts shut down, shut down. <laughs> and this was my favorite part, actually, when she points out, if we get any more squirrels, we have new tools in place to quickly take care of the problem. Ooh, I wonder what these new tools are. Huh. Makes you wonder because at the Hollywood Testing Center, it did look like they were doing some type of spruce up or something. They were already installing more cameras. We saw that. Some of their new tools, we actually saw one of them being a taser that security has. And that's kind of where we're going to, we're going to kick it off when we look at clips. But I want to share one more email, one more email. We know, because the other day I shared another leaked email from our favorite Scientology spy, Diane from Ventura. And Betsy was, there was this call to action to people who got this email to come to Las Vegas during Super Bowl weekend and hand out the truth about drug booklets. Need to get on that Las Vegas strip in front of all those dispensaries and hand out booklets about marijuana, about the marijuana. <laughs> they have other ones too. They cover other drugs. And they were asking for three to 500 people to show up. But of course they had just sent out the email. If you are in Las Vegas, maybe you can get eyes on this and really see what the deal is. Are there going to be, be people out there Saturday and Sunday? That's today, today and tomorrow. 
handing out these Truth About Drugs booklets. You'll be able to spot them because they're wearing the Foundation for a Drug-Free World t-shirt, which I think is blue. Some might be wearing those yellow volunteer minister shirts as well. So knowing that, we're going to take a look at an email that went to Diane that was actually a little while ago, but it is about this volunteer minister front group for Scientology. Although at least they say they're Scientology volunteer ministers. So you know what? It's rude of me to call them a front group because Scientology is right in the name. So let's just say, <laughs> here we go. This again is from Betsy. Hi, Diane. I have designed an ID card for a fully trained volunteer minister. A VM, no, VM is volunteer minister. A VM receives this once they complete the full VM courses or all 19 courses separately. Sidebar, these are courses you can do online for free. And this is what they tried to rope Diane in, who just wanted to help. And Scientology had her do all these online courses and then try to get her to do work that they could take credit for. The design is similar to ones awarded to Christian chaplains. Once they have finished their training, they can, they can show these at a hospital, for example, and they are granted immediate access. It's their official credentials. Okay, let me get this right. So Betsy from Scientology is making ID cards for volunteer ministers to gain immediate access into hospitals. That cannot end badly at all. She goes on to say, I am looking for someone who has an ID card printer and is willing to donate the printing of these cards. I would like to make them, I would like to get them made for any volunteer minister who is fully trained and intends to use it to help others. Okay, so she's basically crafting, but needs the printer for the cards too. So looking for somebody to print these ID cards to gain immediate access into hospitals. The lady pictured in the below photo needs to get into a hospital to assist a patient with unconscious person assists. In Scientology, there are these different assists that L. Ron Hubbard came up with, and there is one that you can deliver to a person who is unconscious that's supposed to rise them, raise them from this unconsciousness. So she does show this photo of this lady who needs to get into a hospital immediately to give an assist to a patient who's unconscious. And she needs an ID to be able to get in there, which you know what? Sidebar again tells us that it sounds like hospitals were stopping volunteer ministers from getting in because they didn't have proper identification. I, you know, what? I'm going to go out on a limb here and speculate. I'm going to speculate that hospitals, it was the only out they had to stop the volunteer ministers from coming in is to say, yo, you don't have ID. We're not letting you in. So then Betsy's like, wait a minute, I got an idea here. I got one. I'm going to find out if anybody has a printer and I'm just going to make the ideas like in Canva or something. Got to give her props for being so crafty. So let's see what else she says here. In this situation, the unconscious woman is not a family member and cannot give okay for the volunteer minister to come as a friend because she's unconscious. This is where the ID card is important because it gives her credentials that the hospital is looking for and they will let her in if she has it. Okay, let's sidebar here again on this. So Betsy is saying there is a woman who she identifies down below with a photo <laughs> is trying to get into a hospital to see an unconscious patient to deliver an assist called the unconscious person assist. She's not family to this woman. She just needs access to get in there with this, these credentials that sounds like Betsy's going to make at her craft table down in the basement at the blue buildings for anyone who's done these 19 free courses to use these credentials to get into hospitals and have access to patients who they are not related to. Again, that's not going to end badly at all, right? Right? <laughs> so let's see. So she's like, blah, blah, blah. I need the printer. Who will donate it? As a separate cycle, I would like to know who is a fully trained volunteer minister who would like to have one of these ID cards. I will present them at our World Humanitarian Day dinner, <laughs> to which you are all invited. As always, thank you. Warmly, Betsy, volunteer minister in charge, Los Angeles, 
organization. Diane, thank you so much for this. Diane, our favorite Scientology spy who shared these emails. And there's more people. There's just not enough time in the day to go through all of them, but we're going to. Trust me on this one. In fact, I think I might need to do an extra stream just to read emails to you, <laughs> which you can tell I enjoy. So our takeaway from that, volunteer ministers' latest scam is to make their own IDs, their own credentials to get into hospitals to visit patients they're not related to who are unconscious and can't consent. But if they make this ID card, they can get in there and do that. That's not weird. That's not culty, right? It's fine, right? Is it fine? It's fine. It's fine. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> no, it's not. It's super culty. All right. So speaking of uh, some super culty things, let's jump over. We we're gonna we're gonna go back. We were talking about how, per the email that I just read to you, right? There's this line in it. This is from Betsy again. This was to Diane. If we get any more squirrels, we have new tools in place to quickly take care of the problem. What what could what could Betsy be referring to? Oh, I don't know. Let's take a look at something that we just saw. LA Cam links down below to all the videos that I am going to share with you. And if you get a hot minute, get over there and subscribe to their channels. I do. I'm obsessed. I think you will be too. This is LA Cam. This is outside the Hollywood Testing Center. Check this out. Now, you're going to have to watch closely when the security guard comes out. You see a flash and you can hear a... <laughs> yeah, check this out. Oh, there you go. You got the mask now on. You want to stand under the umbrella? I know you, you might get wet. You know, you, you got to get that mask on, man. What's up? How you doing? Random lady. Oh, what the hell? Oh, my gosh. Oh, yo. Oh, my gosh. She's got a taser. Did you hear it? Did you see it? Oh, there you go. You got the mask now on. Here, we'll just, we'll take another look. We'll take another look. Man. Here she comes. What's up? How you doing? Somehow she decides this is a good oh, idea. Oh, what the hell? Oh, my gosh. Oh, yo. Oh, my gosh. She's got a taser. He totally, he totally pulled it out and did the, j j I mean, you could see the light there. So are these the new tools? Are these, are these some of the new tools now that the Hollywood Testing Center for the Church of Scientology has to deal with squirrels? which is what they call the protesters and people live streaming. Were you going to just tase people now? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, but that is what we saw. All right. Now there is a lot that went down last night and I don't have clips for every th little thing that happened, but just so you know, there were a couple of the protesters who were, who were physically attacked. A bunch of them were outside a restaurant. Can somebody put the name of the restaurant in the chat? And in the comments, if you know it, if you know the name of the restaurant, because you saw the clip, go ahead and share it in the comments too. It was some French name and I forgot it. La Poubelle or something like that. This is a restaurant that is right outside Celebrity Center, which is where Danny Masterson and other celebrities go for Scientology. It's also where the Manor Hotel is. It's the same building. It's a hotel that's run by Scientology where Scientologists can stay. I've stayed there. My mom has stayed there. In fact, my water broke with my first daughter on a sofa in the Manor Hotel. I hope they cleaned it. I mean, it was 33 years ago. So you, maybe that couch isn't even, even there. So this is this restaurant is across from there. And uh, DOA was out there originally, defender of ants, Scotty. And other people joined and he was protesting because the owner of the restaurant supported Danny Masterson during his trial. And there were just questions about it. But while there, a few things happened. This guy, someone referred to him as a, as a, as a random homeless guy, but that was kind of in air quotes, attacks Cam. There's a scuffle, DOAs involved. Separately, Jessica Palmadesa gets punched in the chest. We're going to share a clip because she calls the police. Nobody comes. It's a whole thing. So this is protesters. Let's see. This is outside the Hollywood restaurant where the owner supported uh, Danny Masters.
hold on, hold on. I'm just watching it by myself. La Poubelle. I think that's a restaurant, right? Is that how you say it? La Poubelle. All right. La Poubelle. Let us take a look at this. Take a look at this crazy. Now, what happened? What they're chatting about. Yeah. Uh, we're right across the Scientology Celebrity Center. So the owner of this restaurant supported Danny Masterson in court. You got to love. Look at Scotty, Defender of Vance. Look, you got to see the cape. Are you are you looking at the cape? <laughs> I love it. Danny Masterson did horrible things to three women, as you guys know. And um, this, so this is where one of the Jane Doe's was drugged and taken back to that building where Danny Masterson did what he did. And um, the owner of this restaurant supported Danny Masterson in court and went up and she wrote uh, character letters for him. That was crazy, man. Yeah. Lots of lots of police there. The police came out. They did. But did they take a report from anybody who was actually assaulted? No, they did not. Are any of us surprised by this? No, we are not. But it is being documented, and it's another example of how the LAPD needs to be held accountable for the obvious preferential treatment that they're showing Scientology, where they'll like handcuff somebody in a hot minute, but a, a victim of an, of an assault either gets detained themselves or no attention paid at all. Now, also something that happened last night, Chris without a Hellcat, his car got keyed on both sides, on both sides. And I got a little clip of that. Let's take a look at that. Somebody keyed my car. That's crazy. That's crazy. Hey, they keyed both of them, bro. They keyed both of them. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. I'm going to be here every day now. <laughs> Best part of that is him saying, I'm going to be here every day now. These things are not a deterrent. They're not going to deter anyone. They're actually going to beef it up. So... If I could take a moment, I wish I could cue like really slow music in the background right now. I bet there's a way for me to do it. and I don't know how. Church of Scientology, Office of Special Affairs. You were once my people. You got to get in touch with the real world. You got to know what life is like for the normies outside of Scientology. These type of things just fuel them on and reinforces their purpose to stand up to your cultish behavior. That's my PSA for Scientology. <laughs> yeah. Stirring it up. They're just trying to stir it up over there. All right. So we're going to take a look at this was after Jessica Palmadessa got punched in the chest by an elderly man who looks like worked for the restaurant that she was in front of. And this is when she she had called the police to hours prior reporting that she had been hit, punched, yet nothing. And here she is on the phone with 911 again. Hi, I called for an assault two hours ago for a man that hit me. It's literally been two hours now and nobody has come. I've called three times since. Is there anyone that's coming? Because this it was outside the restaurant law. I What's La Poubelle? La Poubelle? Something like that. Okay, you're still there, correct? Yeah, yeah so I've, it's, I've been out okay. here for two hours. It looks, like we, it looks like we do have an officer assigned. Has anything changed since you last called that we need to update them on? Well, the restaurant closes in 15 minutes, and uh, which means that everybody's going to be gone that's inside there, including the person that did this, So, because he's a worker at the restaurant. Okay, well, I we'll believe he is. The officers will be out as soon as they can, okay? Uh, they've been dispatched you're saying i'm sorry They're, they've been dispatched 
So an officer was assigned, but hadn't showed up. It was a whole thing. It went on and on. The guy, I think I saw somewhere that said that he just ran out of the restaurant when they all left. And I don't think that we're surprised that nothing happened to the guy. But again, it was documented. And it's another example of the LAPD not responding when citizens are being actually assaulted. But when Scientology calls, you know, then they're like, what do you need? What do you need? It's ridiculous. Ridiculous. Now, to do a little brain scrub, let's do a little brain scrub because that was some tough stuff to watch. It's so BS. And it's, it is correct to be enraged and upset by this because we should be. But we need a brain scrub, or at least I do. <laughs> because we do have a lot of things to talk about today. And some of them are kind of, mm, but needs to be talked about it, needs to be talked about. So for a little brain scrub, we're going to take a look, speaking of DOA, what Scotty was doing the other day. I just continue to be amazed by his creativity. He decided, you know, the rain had cleared in Los Angeles. The rain is gone. It's a nice day out. Maybe you feel like doing a little bit of camping and a good squirrel needs a nest. So what did Scotty, DOA, Defender of Ants do? He set up his own squirrel nest with a hammock right in front of the blue buildings off of L. Ron Hubbard Way. Let's take a look. Let's see. How the king squirrel has uh, laid his nest here. Now we wait. Now we wait. Scientology's a call! <laughs> oh, I just thought that was so funny. <laughs> Protesting from a hammock. I mean, that's next level creativity there. That's massively creative. Yeah, he did. Tim says Scotty had a busy day. He did. He was all over the place. All over the place. The king squirrel, though. The king squirrel has laid his nest. <laughs> oh, you got to love that. Now, you know, you know, I love my girl Pearl Snappy over in Austin. She, this girl had the police called on her. And I think there were four other women. And I thought it was hilarious because they kept saying she had said, and even the ladies themselves said this. They're like, wow, we're such a threat. Four middle-aged women just out here videotaping. This is at the temporary org for Austin. This is where they have been while their empty renovated building has sat because why? because they don't have the staff to fill the building because leader David Miscavige has said, you cannot move into this new building that you all paid for. No, 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 no. You need to keep paying rent down the street because you don't have enough staff. You don't have enough staff. They are requiring them to have more staff than there are public parishioners in Austin. No joke. We know they only have 120 people in their field, as they call it in Scientology. So Pearl Snappy headed over to their location. And you know what? This opening is supposed to be February 24th. I don't know for sure. We still don't know for sure if it's happening. That is how it is looking. Scientology needs this to happen because... L. Ron Hubbard's birthday is coming up in March and they need the video of the new building opening for their propaganda for the members. Is it happening? I don't know. So Pearl Snappy with her friends go show up at their temporary location where they've actually been at for a while to see what's up. Because you would think they're moving like they're packing, right? Where's the moving boxes? Where's the pods full of stuff to move over? It doesn't look like that they're moving. I don't know what is going on here, but more importantly, they're out there and they were, well, you're just going to see what happened. The, the police get called and she handled it so incredibly well. And even the landlord shows up and the, the protesters who are there gave him a good education about Scientology. So let's give a little listen 
And again, this is Pearl Snappy in Austin. There's a lot of people who just want to see that their family members are still alive. I've got the clip turned up. It's a little hard because it's these are the ladies who are next to her and they're actually talking to the landlord, to Scientology's landlord and giving him the 411 on what Scientology is and that it's a human trafficking cult. <laughs> oh, it's just so great because, well, you know. All right. I, I get your message. And we're not yelling at him or anything. We're just trying to be here, have a sign, and film them. And I hope that that's okay. And then you go about the truth. Yeah. yeah. Just- See, what had happened was Scientology called the police. And at first, a Scientology representative said they managed the building because there's multiple businesses in that area. It's not just Scientology. So right off the bat, they lied. But Pearl Snappy was there to call them out on it. And no, 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 no. She let the police know. No, they don't. They're a tenant in the building. So what did they do? They call the owner of the building, who's this elderly gentleman who gets dragged down there into these shenanigans. And that's who they're speaking to. They took all their They came over and took our pictures. Every single one of us. Yeah. They got right in our faces. Hold on. Did I not hit the share button? Hold on a sec. It is a video. You're right. Oh my gosh. I'm just watching by myself again. <laughs> oh, you know the greatest thing about this, about this video, actually? I don't know if it's in this one or it's in a different one, but the landlord tells Pearl Snappy and the ladies who were there that Scientology is supposed to give him a 60 day notice before they move. And he did not get any such notice. Now, in all fairness to Scientology, this could mean that maybe they're going to rent that place still, even though they have the other building, right? Because they're so busy. They, they need the space. So maybe that's it. I don't know. I don't think it is though. Okay, check this out. I'm just going to back it up a little bit. We're just trying to be here, have a sign, and film them, and I hope that that's okay. And then you go about the truth. Yeah, they, yeah, they, they took all their pictures. They came over and took our pictures. Yeah. Every single one of us. Yeah. They yeah. got they right in our faces. They, they came right in front of the I'm a little surprised at that. They do it always. Right every time. And unfortunately, all over the, all over the world, even. Have this got nails in them after they pro- yeah, they're telling the landlord how protesters who've been protesting Scientology have returned to their vehicles with nails in the tire, which is true. It's happened in Clearwater. It's happened in San Diego. Uh, and he's and also that their 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 pictures were taken when they were there protesting. And that seemed to stick with him. He's like, I'm, I'm surprised to hear that. That's why we only have one vehicle. Everywhere. Do they go home by nine? The landlord's talking about how they by nine. See, the original plan when they were there in the location that they're at right there is they were going to, you know, protest, but Pearl Snappy's holding a sign with what in Scientology is called the clear cognition. It is a realization that a Scientologist will have about their reactive mind, which indicate that they have achieved the state of clear. And in Scientology, it's that I've been creating my own reactive mind and I'm not going to do it anymore. So in Dianetics, Alan Hubbard talks about this reactive mind, which records all these moments of pain and unconsciousness. So when you go clear, supposedly your realization is that you've been creating it the whole time, but you're not going to do it anymore. And she's got this on a sign. And this is a very well-guarded and protected secret in Scientology because they want you to pay tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars to get there and onto the upper levels. And she's holding a sign with it right there. So this is very upsetting to Scientology. And there is, you can see the sign when you go watch the whole video. But this isn't just your average protest sign. This is a big deal. She's standing right where people are going to leave graduation there in Austin and have no choice but to see the sign. Scientology cannot handle that. They can't have that at all. So they need to get her moved at all costs. So what they end up doing is talking to the landlord and talking, reminding him how much they pay him for rent. And the landlord even kind of sheepishly was like, you know, I, 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 you know, I sympathize with what you're doing and I understand, but they, you know, they pay rent, they pay money. It almost sounded like he said, they owe me a lot of money 
I wasn't totally sure on that. I have to ask Pearl Snappy. And if you guys see her in the chat, Pearl Snappy, did he say they owe me a lot of money or they pay a lot of money? Because I'm curious if they're, you know, if they got back rent. So that's going on. And what ends up happening is Scientology does convince the landlord to have them removed from the property. So they have to go out onto the sidewalk. And Pearl Snappy's whole point was, hey, we were going to just be here quietly like we are, not yelling, just recording and holding our signs. Because remember, the sign she was holding was going to do all of the work. Now that we are far away, we're going to have to yell. Now, now we're on public, you know, public property, public property, public on the sidewalk out there. They're not going to be able to hear us. So we're just going to have to shout from the curb which is where she shares another Pearl Snappy original song on this Friday night that I just love it when she comes up with the music because she's so creative. Do I got it pulled up? Yes. So give a listen to this. Oh, Zenu, I'm in fear for my life from the long arm of Osa. Miss Cabbage coming down from the gallows and you don't have very long. The cans are up, TRs are out, they finally found him. The clapping cow who made a vid and now we're all out here. Never more to go astray. This will be the end of day of your fucking cult. <laughs> I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> I got all excited and into the song and I hit the wrong button. That was me. That was all me. That was not, we can't blame that on Scientology. <laughs> all right. Am I back? Yes, I'm back. Okay. That was amazing. That was absolutely amazing. She's so talented. She's so creative. So much creativity. I just love it. Okay. Link down below for her full video. And if for some crazy reason you're not already subscribed to her channel, you will want to be because she does a great job bringing the protests, educating people who are there. But it's the entertainment, honestly. She just does it in such a fun way. I absolutely love it. No, the F-bomb didn't make my screen black out. I, I hit the wrong button. Um, that was totally me. That was totally me. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I should not be dancing and trying to multitask. You got to remember, I'm the same person who got pulled over two times for dancing in her car because the officer thought I was having at least the one time in medical emergency. So apparently bad things happen when I bust a move, <laughs> but it's not going to stop me, especially if Pearl Snappy keeps singing these songs. All right, so we're going to take a little look at Down the Rabbit Hole News. I love Rabbit. She has been connecting the dots on a few things as it relates to Scientology, Scientologists, other cults. And as she says in this clip, cults are colliding. Things are coming together. We talk a lot about on this channel, front groups for Scientology and how Scientology and Scientologist will try to align themselves with legitimate organizations doing good for the clout. The volunteer ministers, that's how they got our favorite Scientology spy, Diane from Ventura. Diane was working with an interfaith group in her community and she wanted to help. And so in this interfaith group, Scientology was supposed to come work with them and do all these things to help in the community. They didn't, they did nothing. And they did end up getting kicked out of it out of it. So we see this sometimes where also with Scientology and their Citizens Commission on Human Rights. What's the deal with that? They say they support all these human rights, yet Scientology is a human trafficking cult. So how do we reconcile these two things? How as a Scientologist would you reconcile this, right? Now, I will say this, not all Scientologists are aware of 
many of the abuses happening in the C organization, which is where it's the worst. But some of them do know and they do not recognize it as abuse. They don't recognize it as human trafficking. I'm telling you this as someone who didn't, I didn't, I didn't recognize it as abuse when I was in Scientology. I didn't recognize it as human trafficking when I was in Scientology. And often it takes leaving Scientology, especially when you grew up in it. And that's just, that's the normal, right? That's how you're normally treated. Well, I didn't make my statistical quota. So of course I should be denied food and sleep or have to scrub the bathroom with a toothbrush and do stuff like that. That's the mild stuff, honestly. Those are examples of things that happened to my daughter when she was in Florida and Clearwater training to work for Scientology here in the Twin Cities. It It's... uh ridiculous. So anyways, let me get to this clip though. Rabbit at Down the Rabbit Hole News has been really connecting the dots, really connecting the dots. And she's got a clip that she's looking at with Elena Cardone, who is the wife of Grant Cardone. They are both high level Scientologists. And we've been questioning, like, are they starting their own cult? Because there's a guy named Ben John who went on to, uh, he was on Cults to Consciousness. He was also on Aaron, Aaron Smith Levin's channel, Growing Up in Scientology, sharing all about how he woke up in the cult of Cardone and realized that it was a cult and connected the dots and the parallels to Scientology. And it looks like, hmm, the question is, are the Cardones creating their own cult? And what do they know about the human trafficking in Scientology? Well, Check this out. Elena Cardone is positioning herself as someone who is anti-human trafficking. Meanwhile, humans are being trafficked in her church. But still here she is. And I love that Rabbit's connecting the dots on this. Check it out. Against him? That same guy? That same guy? The cults are colliding? They're colliding? Y'all see why my ears were like perked up ringing when I heard Mr. Ben John over here. And my goodness, I wish, I wish YouTube would hurry up with the transcript because he said it. And I had the super chat at the end. I said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, Mr. Ben John, you mean to tell me that this woman had a little seminar telling people that everything that that's horrible and bad in this world happens to you right it's because it happens to you right and it's your fault and somebody raised up their hand and said well i was raped is that my fault yes it is and she's over here trying to battle human trafficking aligning herself with tim Ballor and all like listen listen so of course my ears went like this It's unbelievable. It's so bold. She's, I think she's going to go further down that rabbit hole and I'm here for it. I want to pay attention to that. She's connecting the dots. There's uh, in the video, Elena Cardone, Ben John shared a story where he said that a, a colleague of his and friend of his in Grant Cardone's organization was at a workshop or something that Elena Cardone was doing. And Elena Cardone was saying, anything that happens to you, you are totally responsible for. And this woman stood up and said, I was raped. Was that my fault? And Elena Cardone says, yes. And the woman was distraught and upset, which she should have been. And she left. Unfortunately, she continues to be a member in that organization despite that. So Elena Cardone's over here saying that, but then trying to align herself with anti-human trafficking organizations. It's, it's Scientology dodging 101. It, it, it's, this is what they do. And it's very uh, ridiculous. I don't even know what to say about it anymore, but we're going to see, we're going to see this. We're going to see more of this as, as Scientology feels that they're more and more under attack, being religiously prosecuted, they're going to come out with more and more of these ways that these front groups that they have are doing good and that they're anti-trafficking and all this to take attention away from the fact that they are actually covering up a hell of a lot of abuse and SA and trafficking children and adults. 
So you you watch for it. There's going to be more. There's going to be more of Scientology coming out trying to play the other side of that card. Aaron at Growing Up in Scientology here on YouTube, he gave his response to Mike Rinder's blog article that came out the other day. And if you need to be caught up on this, long story short, Mike Rinder gave a response to being called out by Rabbit um, Down the Rabbit Hole News. Miriam Francis had questions for him. They went to him. Instead, they got back an attorney letter saying, when you lay down with dogs, you get fleas. It just created more and more of people questioning, like, why, why are you attacking the victim? Why are we not more supporting the victim? And so then Mike Rinder did a blog post sharing the many ways that he helped expose Scientology, which he has, which he has. I think we got to remember to acknowledge that. I'm not saying that, I'm just saying that, it, you know, he did. Um, but he also <laughs> went on to respond in ways that sound like victim blaming. And it, it's a PR nightmare. And per his article that he shared, he's going to step away from social media. I think that's a good idea. Um, but Aaron did a great response to the whole thing. So if you have not seen the video, you got to go see the whole video. Not right now, though, because I'm not done. But afterwards, I linked it down below. But there's a part that I really want to focus on and share. And that is, is his message here, because I think this is really kind of the more important part of all of this. Criminal case that with a little bit of luck is coming very soon in both the United States and Australia against her father for the horrific abuse that Miriam was subjected to by her Sea Org member father. The criminal case uh, 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 prosecuting him for this abuse, the story of which was told in season two, episode one of Mike Rinder and Leah Remini's television show, Leah Remini's Scientology in the Aftermath. The criminal case that will be coming, hopefully, I mean, I guess you could just plead guilty to everything and there wouldn't be a trial. Um, <clears throat> is going to be the next giant leap forward in exposure of Scientology, its harmful abuses and practices, what it does to children, what it does to families, how it really operates, how Scientology silences victims, shames victims, covers up for um, rapists and pedophiles. And it's going to be the next big chapter. You heard it. And I agree with that. I agree with that. It's going to be the next big chapter because it should be. And we've talked about this a bit, how a lot of these cover cover ups, we've also learned since that Scientology had a slush fund. This is something that Matt Pesh shared, who was over treasury and in charge or involved to some degree with a slush fund where he, he came, you know, he could whistleblow about it, was used to pay off family members and victims of SA to keep them quiet. How many? We don't know. They, we know, we totally know. I know for a fact they cover this up. I shared this guys with you when I was 22, was I 22, 22, 23, when my essay occurred and Scientology covered it up and told me, because I wanted to leave the C organization, that they would let me leave if I never spoke about it. Didn't go to a doctor, didn't go to the police. Stayed quiet about it for 20 years. When my mom found out the truth of what happened, that's part of what helped her decide to leave Scientology. It took me 20 years to tell her. Be and in large part because of the Scientology mind control and the threats of losing your family. My family had three generations in Scientology. So whole nother story, but speaks to when I say, I know they cover it up. They do. And this is the issue with Miriam Francis and her story. Her father, who did this, was a member of the C organization and remained so until I think it was him who said, you know, this is can actually get Scientology in trouble that I shouldn't be here. So I think that there, you know, there's a lot going on with, there's a lot of discussion that's been had and is going to be had. It's just going to about where, you know, Mike Rinder's response, how he respond, what's happening with Miriam Francis there, how things were handled when Aaron Smith Levin was voted off the board. There's a lot of emotions and things around that. And in my mind, this is my opinion. This is not a situation of infighting and, and, oh, this is distracting from the goal 
of bringing down Scientology or exposing Scientology. In my opinion, this is more exposing Scientology because what happened to Miriam Francis happened in Scientology and people questioning and wanting to know what people who potentially knew about it were in the room when it happened. Not, not literally, but you know what I mean? Want to know more what they know. There's going to be difficult questions about that. Does it mean that he knew that Mike Rinder knew? No, not necessarily. And he talks about it. I, I really recommend you go read his entire blog article completely through just to you know be fair about it. If you're going to have an opinion about it, make sure you read his side and information about it as, as well. And Aaron does his response to it. And I think it's just great that, that he did that. But at the end of the day, this is about supporting the victims. We are here to amplify the message of the victims of people who have left Scientology, who experiences a variety of abuses. Some of it's financial. There's people who are in Scientology who are financially ruined because of how Scientology would take their credit cards, get their limits run up, and even run them without their okay. My mom one day woke up to find boxes of books on her doorstep from Scientology that she never ordered but somebody took money that was on her account and used it for those books and sent them to her. This is when she was a Scientologist in good standing. So there's a variety of these things. And as we share these things and we talk through it, there's going to be difficult questions at times. How someone chooses to handle those difficult questions though. Um, and that's really more what I see with this whole, the conversations continuing about with Mike Rinder and the questions that, that people have for him and other people as well. There, as much transparency as we can, we can have on it just only, you know, only helps. And I think we're going to see more of that. Church of Scientology. Hey, you special SP, what specifically do you think would topple the LAPD's, LAPD's opinion of the protesters? Ooh, good question. I think, and we've seen this, there have been times where the LAPD has had interactions with the protesters and protesters have handled themselves very well. And there's been times where they've been calling out the LAPD on their shenanigans, which they need to do as well. I think continuing to let them know that, hey, we're not, because the narrative from Scientology is that the protesters are anti-police. And that's just not true. The protesters, like anyone, are anti-police corruption anti-police shenanigans and not showing up for people who've been assaulted and need help or hauling away people who are assaulted on multiple cameras, like what happened to Aaron when he was assaulted by Patrick Henry, Patrick, uh, Patrick Perry. So I, I guess I don't have a complete answer to that beyond just continue to show up and, and educate, just continue to show up and educate the best that you can. Blue Thunder, thank you for the super chat. The Scientology way still live on Mike shame. I don't, I've given this some thought and, and I've been asked this question. I don't know how much of it is Scientology indoctrination that remains, how much of it is personality and who he or anyone is for that matter. It, it's, you know, the, it could be a blend of the two. I don't know that that's something that we'll ever know. I do see that there's there's a connect that's missing. There's this disconnect between how things work on the internet, online, with communities and the dialogue and the expectation and hope for transparency. And it's just such an open forum and platform that it's great when it's great and it sucks when it sucks. Just depends on what side of the coin you are on that. Um I think that's part of it too. There seems to be this disconnect in the way that these responses have come out from him or the Aftermath Foundation that have been very condescending. And I don't know, is that leftover from Scientology or is that just personality? Us ex-Scientologists, we're imperfect people just like everybody and all humans. Not everything that we do today that's annoying or weird is because of Scientology. A lot of it as is and can be, but sometimes it's just personality. Just something I think we should remember. <laughs> hey, more fun than sitting at home. This is Diane, our favorite Scientology spy. Thank you for the emails, Diane. And we need to know. So Natalie, I posted the email on my community page now. That is fantastic. I should do that too. I know Jessica Palmadessa, she posted it as well. Uh, thank you so much, Diane, for these emails. They're great. Keep them coming. 
because we all want to know now. We've had you on the channel two times. They still call and email you. We've now shared the recent email links after this, after today. Will they still call and email you? Inquiry minds want to know. I want to know. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Pirate Tom, first class. Thank you so much for the super chat. Read Aaron's entire response. Drop. Exactly. He dropped the mic on that, just like Mike Brown. I have been blown away by the, my favorite responses so far are Mike Brown's and Aaron's from yesterday. And especially seeing someone like Mike Brown, who if you followed his channel, he's pretty even keeled, you know? And who would almost, I, I would consider like, you know, a little, he keeps things pretty clean, you know, not with the swearing. And then he does this response and the swearing comes out and the passion and the upset. And you see, you can see, and you can feel the pain there. And Aaron's response, same thing. And both of them were total mic drop moments. I, I agree with you completely on that. Definitely. You want to go check those out. Gene the Bean, with all the information and statements coming out regarding Mike Rinder, I'm wondering why no one is questioning Leah Remini's part in all this. Surely it's about time someone asked her to comment publicly. Um, I wouldn't say that, uh, I wouldn't say no one is questioning that. <laughs> I've seen some questions. I've seen some questions. Um, Mike Brown shares in his video and interaction uh, as well. You know, um, Aaron talks about it. There's, I, you know, I, I don't know. I, because I don't know, I'm hesitant to say, cause I, I just don't know. I only know what I've heard Aaron say about it and what I've heard Mike Brown say about it. I, I agree. I, I would like to see a public statement from Leah. She's in a difficult position. She's got her lawsuit going on with Scientology right now. She's actively battling them. She's been harassed like crazy, just beyond with Scientology. And she's been battling this for years. Was she, did she know about some of the things we have found out recently that Mike rinder has been, you know, accused of? I, I don't know. I don't know. Does it change anything? I, I don't know. It's, I know they have a good relationship and I know that she appreciates the work that Mike has done. Because again, even though it's like we can all hold multiple thoughts in our head at one time, I can agree that Mike's responses and how the Aftermath Foundation has responded and some of the things they've done, I don't agree with and I think are public relations nightmares. But I can also agree that they've done a lot of good at the same time and I know they will continue to. They just need to make that board a bit more diverse. I think that that would really help. It would really help. Uh, let's see. Corn freak. Are we really supposed to give a rat's ass what Osa thinks asking for Gerald? <laughs> no, I think you should care about whatever you want to care about. All right. I know, I know I missed a couple questions here. Claire is saying, uh, I submitted a comment question on Mike Rinder's blog comment section. It has not been posted. Anyone else had the same thing happen? I bet you, you know, and it's his blog, it's his page. If it were me, I'd want to short of anything that's, you know, like truly being hateful for the sake of being hateful. If there's questions and information, even if I don't like them or he doesn't like them. I mean, personally, I think that should be left up because if nothing else, people have a right to ask these questions when you go publicly and you share these stories and you speak out about it, it, uh, I think it's important to show them, but I, I've heard of that, that comments do get deleted that, you know, don't align with the narrative. I, I wonder how many of them are. And I'm curious too, you guys, has anybody else run into that? That is curious. That is very curious. Resin Temple saying Mike was keeper of secrets and dirty deeds for Scientology. He worked for LRH personally. You don't just stop doing things after 40 years. Could be, could be. Um, I will say like, you know, my story is different. I grew up in Scientology. I was in the C organization. I was a staff member. I was a public Scientologist as well, but I was nobody when I was in the C organization. I joined the C organization in literally the lowest place you could because I knew whatever my job was, I was going to do a great job. But if I could stay low level, I knew I could keep myself 
off of the Rehabilitation Project Force, which is Scientology's gulag, where you get sent for massive reprogramming when you get in trouble in the C organization. It's no way to live. You're not allowed to communicate. They, well, Scientology said that they have discontinued this and they're not doing it anymore. But, you know, they've said that before. But in my day, this is what I would see. They have to wear black and they would wear armbands with different colors on it. And the armband color would indicate whether or not they could originate communication to someone, even their own family. If you're on the rehabilitation project force and you see your wife go by and you you don't have the status yet to communicate, you can't say anything. You cannot communicate. It's only when you get a certain color armband that you can because it shows that you've made progress on the program. It's just so nasty. All right. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and check your subscribe button. I'm seeing some people had to resubscribe themselves and hit that like button as well. Me and Taz, what's your opinion on TAF? TAF is asking people to sign a contract saying they won't say anything bad about them on social media. Oh, the Aftermath Foundation. Okay. This is a great question. So the Aftermath Foundation has a a contract agreement, whatever you want to call it, that as I understand it, says that you won't, the gist is you won't say anything bad about them on social media. Um, I see why they'd want to do it, (laughs) right? Because if you're giving money and then the person turns around and, you know, talks crap about you, but at the same time, why would that even be a concern? Why would, why, why, where are there that many people who are asking for who you've committed to giving money to, but you're not going to do it unless they agree to not talk crap about you. It's their right to do if they want to do it like that. I think, again, it's just something that's going to backfire because why do you want to control communication to that degree? How about work really hard to not do things that make people want to talk crap about you? I don't know. Seems like, you know, if you're trying to lose weight, Sometimes it's easier not to eat an entire bag of Oreos to begin with. Then you don't have to go work it off later. That, that's what I do when I'm not eating a total a whole bag of Oreos. <laughs> it's like that. How about just don't do that in the first place and you don't need to worry about it. It's damage control. Um, and I again, I just think it just backfires. It just backfires. It does. Not a sheeple. Thank you for the super chat. Isn't there a governing body that oversees the behavior of the LAPD and aren't tasers illegal? I don't know. I don't know in California. I'm guessing they're not illegal because Scientology will do shady things, but that blatantly out in the open, they're going to make sure their I's are dotted and their T's are crossed. But who knows? Somebody could probably look that up and see if they're legal or not in California because I I actually really don't know. Electra Mercedes, what Rinder wrote was mean, disrespectful, painting himself as a victim in this case is just nasty. Yeah, I agree with that. I honestly think the best and easiest thing to do would have been just saying that, hey, Miriam Francis deserves attention and support in what she's doing and what she's trying to make happen, which is to bring this legal action and get justice. And how does she need to be supported? And how she needed to be supported is she had asked the Aftermath Foundation for money for for therapy. Uh, She did not get it. Infamous Truth Pickle. What about filing class action lawsuits against these random so-called and how they're hiding and harboring predators? I don't know. I don't know the whole legal side of it. I know it's been... It's been tried before. There have been different lawsuits brought before. There's some that are going on now. I don't think they're class action. I don't know enough about the legal side of things to speak on it. Um, That's a good one for our lawyer friend, Zach. What's his name? Our lawyer, your lawyer friend, Zach. Uh, Or even Aaron. Aaron at Growing Up in Scientology is really good at summarizing the legal aspect of these things. That is not my strong point. (laughs) Modern Dancer. Hi, Natalie. If Mike Rinder were smart, he'd come on your channel. 
where you would be fair. Not that you wouldn't hold him accountable, but you have a calm and thoughtful presentation. I appreciate that. And I did a few streams ago, invite him to come on because to have an opportunity, this was before the blog article came back, to have an opportunity to respond. Um, and, you know, I I don't think he's going, well, I know, I'm pretty positive he's not going to because it sounds like he's going to take a step back. And honestly, I think that's the best thing because the Aftermath Foundation needs to get to work doing the work and helping victims of Scientology, helping people leave the sea or continuing that work. And at this point, Mike Rinder, in my mind, has become a distraction from that. So what do you do, right? You, you step down, you step away. And then hopefully they learn and are able to diversify the board more, bring on some people who've never been in Scientology, people who, you know who I'd like to see on the board? Rabbit. I know that'll never happen. <laughs> but down the rabbit hole news, she has a master's degree in, in uh, what is it? Somebody tell me in the chat, like social services, I think it's called a degree in just like all these things. She is she is more than qualified to speak to victims, to be a victim advocate. I think she'd be perfect. But, you know, we're not going to see that happen. I know that. But somebody like that would be awesome. For those reasons, that education piece, I really want to interview Rabbit myself and have her on because one thing that Scientologists and ex-Scientologists and ex org members don't always know is how should this have gone down? If you're a victim of SA, child or adult in the world outside of Scientology, how would it have gone down if the authorities were involved? What are the victim's rights? It, it's a game changer. I believed what Scientology told me and made me believe after my essay that it was my fault. And it wasn't until 20 years later when someone who was never in Scientology who I came across, who happened to be an advocate for RAIN, which is an organization that helps victims of SA, told me it wasn't my fault and educated me more. I found that to be so eye-opening, so healing. It made a huge difference in my life. So that's why I want to have Rabbit on to talk about what would it look like in the real world if these things happened and they were made known? Because I know there are so many more victims out there of Scientology and these covered up abuses who still think it's their fault, who still feel that shame because they think it's their fault. I know this and I think it would be helpful to them as well. All right, let's see where we're at. Where are we at here? Did I grab? Do, do, do. You guys are very, very thoughtful with your nice comments. Thank you so much. TKD for life. Oh, you're amazing. Thank you. Oh, ah, as a fellow SA survivor, I am so proud of you. Thank you. And thank you for being here. Yes, hit that like button, people. Mary Smith says, it is functional to have in-depth knowledge and connections to services and the past path through the services and their processes. Yes, I think that'll help so many people. That's why I really would love to have her on. We're trying to work out scheduling. You know, scheduling is a thing. Yeah, Marlene, they told me it was my fault. I pulled it in that I must have done something. Like they tried to actually find out for me what I what I did that brought this upon myself to be drugged and essayed. Like what I did to make that happen. This was back in, uh, this was even pre-Danny Masterson. And interestingly, Scientology Sea Org Security, when I did share what happened, were familiar with, I had no idea that that had what happened. I could only describe what happened to me, what I could remember, what I couldn't remember, and like the flashes I could see made no sense that I wouldn't be able to remember a lot, except for the things that I could remember that frankly, I wish I couldn't. They knew they're the ones who told me, like, were you, did he give you anything to drink? Like what happened? And, and he did. And that's what had happened. But they were familiar with this already. And this was in 1993, I think, 1993. 
Uh, let's see. Walker 29, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Mike is remarried now. Ex Scientologist has a child going through normal life here in Clearwater. You don't think there's been any pillow talk between him and his wife about the situation. Um, I'm sure I'm sure, but you know, I like, I don't know. They're probably, I'm, I'm sure that there has, but honestly, I don't think that's any of our business. What they talk about between themselves in their own home, that's his family, that's his wife. And I would highly, it's you, it's one thing to, you can disagree with Mike Rinder and what he says and take issue with it and have dialogue about it. What, and I'm not saying that you're doing this Walker. So I'm just, it, your, your comment made me think about it. So please, I'm not saying you're doing this separate, separate, separate. I hope that no one is just hateful. There's no reason to be hateful when there can be a di dialogue about the actual facts. It's difficult at times because there is so much emotion because it is so horrific and I get that. But I would encourage, you know, some level heads there and don't, don't, uh, Mike mentioned in his blog post even, I did, I don't know if he called it attacks on his family. I don't know if it was verbal or what, but I'm not down with that. He's, he's got a great family. This is not, his family is not our business. His relationship to Scientology and as all these things relate is our business because he's chosen to speak out about it and be on a board to help people who've left Scientology. Aaron is asking, is there an Oregon, Minneapolis and St. Paul or only St. Paul? Just St. Paul. It's the old Children's Science Museum. They bought that building on the backs of Scientologists and renovated it. remember. Let's see. Me and Taz, did you see that Mike Rinder won't give money for Miriam's treatment because he thinks Jamie Mustard is profiting from it? So I do believe you're referring to there's treatment that Jamie Mustard recommends that Miriam wants to do. And she was asking money for that. And in Mike's response, he not only brings up and tears down Aaron Smith-Levin, but also Mike Brown, and then makes this comment about Jamie Mustard as Mustard. Is it Mustard? Mustard. Mustard as well. Um, so what if he's profiting from it? Aren't people supposed to make money to make a living? And if you can do it while helping people, power to you. I thought that was unnecessary. And that's what makes this, this is what is causing the trouble and the 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 pushback that Mike's experiencing is comments like that. They don't have a place in what should have been just a response and apology and re trying to put the attention back on the victims of Scientology and the work that the aftermath foundation is doing. It should have just been left there, not now trolling Aaron, Mike Brown and bringing Jamie mustard into it and calling him out for profiting off of this treatment. So he's supposed to do it for free. We're all supposed to do this for free. <laughs> is Mike Rinder supposed to do it for free? Not benefit in any way from these stories and time in Scientology or, write a book and all that. It, this is why there's that backlash. It's, it's when you show up in these ways that are arrogant, it's people just don't like it. It's just not, it's not very nice. Infamous truth pickle. I feel that there should be complete transparency on where the money is going. And it's not just defend the board members showing what is actually, that it's actually helping victims of Scientology. Um, yes. And I think that with nonprofits too, there's rules around disclosing financials, where money goes, their tax records, I think are even to some degree public record. So you'd know, or at least after they file where, you know, what came in and how the money was used. Because again, it is a nonprofit and there's some accountability that they're held to. <laughs> Susan, Suzanne saying, doesn't his blog make money and ask for personal donations to himself? Um, I don't know. Does it? It might. It might. Pearl Snappy. Wi-Fi jammers are legal on private property. Sale jammers are illegal everywhere with few exceptions. Okay. This is interesting because when some of the live streamers and protesters get near the blue buildings, it's like the signal goes really bad. So you're saying they can have Wi-Fi jammers on legal prop on private property, but cell phone jammers are illegal everywhere with a few exceptions. So I wonder if that's what they're doing. 
And for those that don't know, Pearl Snappy is also a cybersecurity expert. So she can tell you all about the VPN and putting like a screen over your phone. So Scientology cameras from up above can't read your phone because they are, they can. They can read your phone when you're near those cameras. They can zoom in. These are really good cameras. Scientology has the money to invest in this stuff. And uh, Pearl Snappy shared that, oh, if you just do this um, cover over your screen, then, you know, it'll, it'll make it so people can't see. Casey Cat, thank you for the super chat. I believe Church of Scientology is installing jammers so the Squirrel Squad won't be able to live stream close to their buildings. I agree. I agree. And Pearl Snappy, we should talk more about that. Calico26, thank you. Did Mike think Aaron wasn't going to respond? Oh, he had to have known. <laughs> you don't have to know Aaron for very long to think that he wasn't going to respond to that or to know that he would respond to that and rightfully so. JW, thank you so much. Does anyone know what time the assault on A.A. Ron happened on January 19th? I found a way to pull the police scanner footage, but only in half hour intervals. If you know, shout it out in the chat, please. Ooh, somebody might have already done that because I'm a little behind. But by all means, if you guys know, do shout it out in the chat. Corsets and curls. The aftermath shouldn't make judgment on any treatment the person wants. Yes, yes. If they are asking for money and money is available, they should get it. Your opinion of how they spend it is nonsense. I agree. If it's a, you know, a valid therapy, I mean, who decides it's valid therapy? But there are ways of doing that, right? We're not saying, well, you know, um, I agree especially with Jamie Mustard, you know, I, I got his book. I need to read it still, but it makes sense. And it's, it sounds legit. A lot of what he talks about, I had neurologists tell me because I've dealt with some neurological issues. And I went and saw a neurologist at the university of Minnesota. And a lot of what was happening to me, they said, this is after I'm talking like for a few years, like I've been tested for this, tested for that. And ultimately their belief is that through the trauma that I went through growing up in Scientology, being in this organization and very specific things that happened that my brain rewired. And then when in times of stress or if I got sick or other things that would cause my brain and my nervous system not to function correctly with each other, and I would get like horrific muscle spasms. And I don't get those used to be every day. Now I don't because I followed through with what they said I should do, which was looking into cognitive behavioral therapy, doing a very specific type of neurological physical therapy. Um, and it's gotten a ton better. I, I still have flare ups where um, if I don't protect my sleep, if I'm not taking care of myself in the ways that I know I should, it creeps back. Uh, so I'm very protective <laughs> of, in fact, last week, I think it was, I wasn't protecting my sleep. I wasn't taking care of myself the way I knew I should have. And I had two nights of pretty bad spasms. And now I put back in those things that I know I need to do. And it's, uh, it's better. Probably walking around this RV show all day too, when I knew that was happening was probably not the best thing, but I wanted to go so bad because I'm obsessed with RVs and camping and all of that. I want to see, hopefully somebody answered those questions about what time the assault happened so that that person can pull that footage. I would love to see that. Dr. MLS, will there be a group gathering in Clearwater? Oh, yes. We got to talk about this. Yes. So, you know, Aaron from Growing Up in Scientology, Farrell Cheryl, Lori Plays, and right now Relatable Reese is there. So you can catch on her channel. She's done some live streaming. Aaron's done it as well. They are out there. I don't know what they're doing today, but I think she's there till like Tuesday or something. So there should be a lot of good stuff on her channel about protesting Scientology in Clearwater. So yes. Yes, yes, yes. Tim saying that uh, even the title of Mike Rinder's blog was a dog at A.A. Ron. 
<laughs> Some of it too against Rabbit, like Rabbit it down the rabbit hole news. I was really surprised how much she got trolled in that. A rabbit right out of David Miscavige's hat. Because here's the thing, people. This is this is uh this is not limited to Scientology, but it is a popular Scientology tactic. And in marketing, it's called positioning, where you position yourself. Let's say you position somebody with a brand that people think they they think well of it, right? They think it's a good thing. Then by, you know, they're going to think more of you. It's like when we were growing up and if you were hanging out with somebody shady, your parents might have been like, hey, it's guilt by association. <laughs> if you hang out with that person, you could be dragged into their shenanigans. And that is true. Well, the opposite, Scientology tries to position themselves with legit organization for the clout. Here's the thing. By positioning Rabbit with Miscavige, that's to get people in their head to think that Rabbit of Down the Rabbit Hole equals David Miscavige, that they're in cahoots. It's it's BS. It's not true. And that is where, that is what I will completely call BS out on too, because that is just a tactic to try to discredit her and what she does and the questions that she brought forth that were from Miriam. Positioning. Do, 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 do. Thank you so much, guys, for liking the video too and hitting the subscribe button. Yeah, a lot, lot on the Wi-Fi jammers. You guys are so right about that. And I think we need to talk to Pearl Snappy more about that. <laughs> Been bang on the drum turner. RVs, remember Natalie, admitting there's a problem at the first step of recovery. Ooh, if RVing and camping is a cult, I'm, I'm all in. I'm all in. I'm all in. Ooh, which by the way, can you guys see my shirt? The Bridge to Total Slavery. It's a cult. <laughs> I got this. Um, oh my goodness. I am, I'm the worst. I'm the worst with names. I'll tell you. Mm, was it Mary? I put a link I put, or I, I put a, I put something in the description of the video. I think it was Mary from modern memes on Etsy sent this shirt, uh, one for my Tony and one for myself. And I absolutely love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. And I got something else that I think I'm going to wear on our later live stream when my Tony and I come back in just a little bit. Alabaster question, did Aaron start his foundation yet? He is working on it, has to go through the approvals to get the nonprofit status and all that. So it is in the works. He just, as soon as it's approved through the IRS, then he's going to go ahead and announce the name and share more, share more about that. Ren listens. So this is in Clearwater. I think they are showing Reese, Lisa McPherson's brick today. And somebody tell me if I'm wrong, but I think today is Lisa McPherson's birthday. If you do not know the Lisa McPherson story, after this live stream, you need to go to the Google and put in Lisa McPherson Scientology. It is tragic. This girl lost her life because of Scientology. She was held in the Fort Harrison Hotel for, what was it, 12, 14, 17 days. And instead of taking her to the nearest hospital, they took her 40 minutes plus away because there was a Scientologist who was a doctor who was there and she died. She died by then. So it's tragic. And I think, I think today, I think today is her birthday. So I'm glad they're going to go and do that and raise more awareness about that. And Gerald, yes, I did. I did talk about DOA's hammock. I thought it was fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. And so fun. I'm so jealous because, you know, it's cold here in the Midwest and I want to be outside in warmth in the sun. I want to go camping. I think today, today I'm going to work after I do my live later with my Tony, I'm going to work on some new merch and I'm going to look at campsites because <laughs> we are, what are we now? February. So like maybe I'm like eight, 10 weeks before I can do that. If you guys have two, you know, us. I follow quite a few people. When I'm not watching Scientology content, I'm watching people in RVs and travel trailers and all that. So if you know of some good ones, let me know in the comments or in the chat because I'm always looking for new ones to follow. And I want to uh, do some live streaming from the road this summer. I'm hoping my Tony and I can take off. We have a travel trailer right now and do some camping. Yes, me and Taz, let's do a, let's do a campaign road trip as many orgs as possible. Oh gosh, how fun would that be? Thank you so much for that super chat, Karen Hall. 
I would love that. Honestly, that's there. I have two goals. I have, well, I have more than two goals, but this year, these are a couple things that I really want to do. Maybe there's more than two. One is I do want my Tony and I to go on a road trip and take you guys along where we live stream, continue to call, you know, cover Scientology updates and all that. Even if it's just for, I don't know how much time I can get off, but I would like to do that. Just putting it out there. The other thing has completely left my mind. <laughs> I had two things. Now I forgot. I forgot what the other thing was. My Tony, what was it? We want to go do the, the camping road trip. I don't know. I'll remember. I'll remember and then I'll tell you. But Tony, if you know, put it in the chat because <laughs> I don't remember. Oh, I love this. More fun than sitting at home. This is Diane, our favorite Scientology spy. Natalie, my Tony, our driveway is RV friendly. I love that. We have a travel trailer. Um, that'd be really far. I don't think we could drive that far because you're in uh, Ventura and we're in the Midwest. Um, love the shirt. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I loved it. I, I thought it was so cool that she sent it. And I, I, I said down below who it is and I'm, I'm horrible. I'm horrible with the names and I apologize because I really do love the shirt. So does Tony. Jamie's saying, I know Mike Rinder is a witness in Leah's case. She has to keep her mouth shut for the greater good. I guess that would make sense because she's currently has this case going on and doesn't really need to be dragged into, you know, a whole nother thing. Um, I get that. I respect that. All right. Just a Melissa Harris, just apologize, Mike Rinder. Don't send your fanboys after Aaron and Mike. I believe you've done great things. Stop making it weird. <laughs> Stop making it weird. <laughs> fanboys. Fanboys. What are fan fanboys? Just like fans who are boys? And if I'm missing that totally, somebody please tell me in the chat what that means. Pearl Snappy. I love camping. Let's go. I love camping. Let's go. This is why eventually I would love one of those drivable, like a class C, nothing too crazy big so that we really could hit the road. Maybe that was my other goal was just, I want to be able to do that at some point. We've, we've had a crazy couple of years, Tony and I, um, with, I've shared with you guys, he just finished 18, 20 months of treatment for cancer and he's doing well, but unfortunately it's an aggressive and rare form. So he gets checked every 12 weeks. Um, but you know, I will say this, the one thing that it really opened our eyes to even more is even though we're in our fifties, we're both well, Tony's about to turn 53. I am 53. It just really makes you realize like, damn, life is short. It is short. And you got to get out. You got to get out and do the things. You got to get out and spend time with people that you enjoy and you want to be around and not waste time with where that's not the case. Because I feel like time is our most valuable commodity and it's very limited how we spend our time, how we spend our time and where we put our energy. And I know this summer, I want to put our time and en energy into doing some camping and some glamping and take all of you with us and just live stream from the road. I have no idea how we're going to pull that off. I'm just putting it out there. I want to do that. <laughs> I think you need a license to operate a Thetan. And if you're new to the channel, a Thetan is what Scientology calls the soul or the spirit. You are the Thetan. You are. <laughs> Pearl Snappy. We are not out PR, not out ethics. We are out camping. Oh my gosh. I'm going to need that on a shirt or a sweatshirt. I'm absolutely going to need that. I love that. I love that. Casey Cat, encourage Reese to come with us to the downtown Kansas City org. I think she has cold feet because she knows people there. Yes. How great would that be? I know she did a short video right in front of it not that long ago and shared that that was a big deal for her to be in front of that space again, which was super cool. I, I would love to see her out there with you guys. We should all encourage her to do that in Kansas City. Victoria Miles, thank you for the super chat. Have you seen the... Have you seen Down the Rabbit Hole with Aaron was so raw? Yes. Yes, I did. And it was. And that, that was when Aaron just basically 
shared everything that was being insinuated by the Aftermath Foundation about why he was voted off the board. He just came clean on the whole thing. Uh, and, and honestly, he shared things that was nobody's business. That he even had to do that was kind of ridiculous because he shouldn't have had to. But you know what? I'm glad that he did because then it lays it to rest. And this is what happened. And it was hard for him. Aaron was a victim. Aaron was attacked by a woman who sounds like she needs some mental health help. And yes, I saw it. It was very raw. And uh, I really had a lot of respect for him in doing that and in taking the power away from anybody who thought they'd have that power to use that against them. And this is a difference too in, in Scientology or people who maybe haven't fully left the Scientology mindset, or maybe they adopted it as a mindset that is still theirs, even though they're no longer in Scientology. And what I see happen sometimes with people like that is there's a lot of judgment about other people, how they spend their time, what they do. And one of the biggest things I've come to realize since leaving Scientology is other people's business is not my business. Unless you're involved in Scientology or shenanigans, then you my business. And we're going to talk about it here. But what people do in their personal lives as consenting adults is their business, unless it is breaking the law, hurting somebody, victimizing somebody else. We're not talking about stuff like that. But there's so much judgment in Scientology because you guys got to realize and remember the C organization, they consider themselves, and Scientology says this, to be the most ethical group on the planet. And their job is to put ethics in on the planet, on everybody. They have elected themselves as the judge of one, what is ethical, and secondly, whether you're doing a good job or not of achieving that. See, it's like total BS and ridiculous. <laughs> Let's see. Did I miss? Did I miss? Did I miss? I think I got it. I think I got it. Here's what we're going to do. I am going to be back with my Tony in about an hour and a half or so. I'm going to do a notification. We are going to answer some questions that we got after we did our first live together. I think it was last weekend. We're going to talk about that and some other things and kind of get into the life after Scientology and answer a bunch of questions. So bring your questions, any of them really. If you still got questions about other things in Scientology, we will talk about it, but we're going to come on and do that probably about 12 central time. I'm going to go ahead and do a notification. Hit that subscribe button and somebody is confirming that today is Lisa McPherson's birthday or would have been had she not died in the hands of Scientology. Um, yes, and, I'm, and we're going to keep an eye and go see if they look at that brick in Clearwater too. So by all means, Victoria, thank you. He was victimized two times, Scientology, and now this. I think you're talking about Aaron. I I get that. I get that. And I, I love that he was just open about it because that transparency is the best. And there's a trust here, I think, between, I can speak for myself. There's things that even I've shared where it's been embarrassing or it's not been my best decisions in life, shall we say. But that's part of it. That's part of it. I'm not worried about being judged for it. And you can judge me for it. That is okay. But it just doesn't bother me um, because I know the bigger reason of why I'm doing this and why we're all here, which is to put a stop to Scientology and these abuses. So I hope to see you guys all back later on at 12 p.m. or so, uh, my time. But in the meantime, I hope you all get out today and have the most amazing cult-free day. <laughs>